TCL is a proud sponsor of the Score North Studios. Enjoy more of the things you love with TCL. Hockey. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite. It's Judd's Hockey Show. And welcome into a one-timer edition, an emergency version, because it's absolutely necessary of Judd's Hockey Show. We're going to be doing the full-length episode that you enjoy so much every week tomorrow after the Wild completes its two-game series against the Vegas Golden Knights this evening on Wednesday. But Zolgad, an executive producer uh, and co-host of Judd's Hockey Show, Declan Goff, we come to you today, and we appreciate you joining us, to talk about a major move, major move made by the new look. It's a new era. <laughs> Things have changed. Minnesota Wild. Zach Parisi, for the second time in his career and first time it, during his 13-year, $98 million wild contract, has been scratched for tonight's game against the Vegas Golden Knights after a season of, I don't even know it's his fault, but lackadaisical and not great play that was followed up by what is clearly the final straw uh, for for GM Bill Guerin and, and to a certain degree, I think, although I don't think he's the main decision maker, head coach Dean Evason, that came on Monday night in Vegas uh, when, with the goaltender pulled for the Golden Knights in the Wild up by one goal, the uh, the veteran Zach Parise decided to extend a shift a minute and 33 seconds on the ice while the center on the line and, and Marcus Foligno got off the ice as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. And Foligno had the puck deep in the Vegas zone and basically left it there and sprinted off the ice. And Zach glided back up the ice when he could have changed and should have changed and decided to stay on and Vegas part largely off of that scored the game time goal and then went on to win in OT. Well, Dex, I went on Mackie and Judd yesterday and ranted yes, about this because it was a selfish, unnecessary, very old school, wild move. Yes. And I said, I would scratch him in Wednesday night's game. And you guys rightfully are like, yeah, but they're not going to. And I said, no, I don't think that they will, but I do think that this is deserving of given how he played and most importantly, and this is the most important thing, Billy Guerin has worked hard, and Dean has too, but Bill Guerin, since he got here, and Paul Fenton before him in the one year he spent as GM, worked their butts off to clean that locker room out and to clean up what had become a selfish, me first, some talented people, yeah. but and, and not bad human beings, but me first hockey players. Mm -hmm. And they cleared out the coils and the Grandlands and the Zuckers and Nino. And I could go down the entire list, but why they did that was because it wasn't working. The chemistry was awful. It wasn't going to work. And, and they almost traded Zach at the deadline last year to New York, but the deal fell through. And so when he did not go to the Island, he came back here and he and Ryan Suter are virtually Declan Goff untradeable. The contracts have no move clauses. They have to approve trades. Um, it's just the contracts are enormous. The salary cap is actually staying the same because of the pandemic. So long story short, the Wild's best course of action, the gutsiest course of action for tonight's game yep. was to scratch Parisi, but it took a lot of guts. Yeah, And they have done that. And I applaud them. And this is why I told you this opening night, and I'll say it again. This is the exact move why I think this team is becoming likable. Absolutely. You said, Dean Evason, you've been tested. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I wasn't necessarily full on against the idea. I just didn't think they'd have the cojones to do it. Bill thought the same thing. I thought the same thing. But when I hear, and, and Evason briefly spoke about this already on, on a press conference after the morning skate, but he said, we as an organization and a staff have made this decision. It's a group decision. So, and I'm not taking your quote out of context here. I'm just trying to make a point that that's going full circle. This is not Dean Evason putting his thumb on the pulse and saying, this is a me movement. I'm going to, I'm going to scratch him out. This is my decision. You have hurt the team or you hurt the team last in the last time out. So you are done and scratched. No, this is from Bill Guerin on down. And it's, and it goes to show that if you're comfortable, you are out. If you are comfortable, we will get rid of you. We're done being just okay. And I don't care if it sounds like I am celebrating this too much. I think this is a good thing for the Minnesota Wild to finally hold accountability. Mm -hmm. And look, we have been on this train, Judd, mostly even you. You've been leading this charge for two or three years now. Before the Zookers, before the Fenton trades really came down around two years ago this time. That the cult, it, it, you took a shot, 
You peaked in the semifinals of the second round. You never got to a conference finals. It didn't work. And the supplemental pieces around you, Coils, Grandlins, Ninos, et cetera, did not elevate their games. So you traded them. Now, were some of those trades questionable at the time for the return that you were getting? Sure, we can go down that path. But d- did those trades, I want I want anyone to, to seriously look themselves in the mirror and say, did those trades hurt the Minnesota Wilds' chances at a Stanley Cup two years later? Uh, do, do you feel worse about the Wild Stanley Cup odds two years ago compared to right now? If anything, I think I'm more optimistic, especially with how open things are looking right now and how crazy the NHL season is with this pause. So this is accountability. I'm happy this is happening. You know, it's a, it's a one and done thing. Zach's coming back in the lineup after this game. This isn't going to be a multi-game scratch, but Parisi's game has been suffering. This is goes also beyond just extending the shift in the third period. He has nine points in 19 games. The shots aren't there. His Corsi is a, is a disaster. He's not the same player he was. So there's all the reasons why he was scratched. But I think Garen and Evison working hand in hand on this one shows an awful lot of where they where they want this team to be and where they can go. And I'm happy to see it. So in 19 games so far in 2021, Zach Parise has three goals and six assists. And he has looked not very good a lot of the time. And he looks like a definite third line guy. Now, I want to address some of the tweets that we've seen about this move um, because there are a lot of people like you and me who applaud it. There also, I saw a tweet saying if he was a star player still, would they do this? Okay. If he was a star player still, he probably breaks up the first pass that resulted in the Vegas goal, but he's old and tired, which is why he has to get off the ice. Okay. Yep. The other thing too is, is I saw a tweet about, well, This goes beyond the shift, and it goes to how he's playing. Yes, that is true. But let me tell you right now, without the selfishness of a shift that went one minute and 33 seconds, Zach Parise is playing tonight. He would not be a healthy scratch if he was just struggling. He is a third-line guy. You know what? Last I checked. All right. As Phil says, his contract's a sunk cost. So, like, it it stinks, but it's a sunk cost. It's just there, okay? Yep. There is so if we can get beyond that for just one second, Zach Parise playing the role of a third line winger who is a depth guy who's not terrible at hockey, but he's certainly not who he once was. Which, by the way, with his style of play through the years, is not surprising. Is not the end of the world. It is not. He would not have been scratched if he hadn't taken that shift, and if he hadn't treated himself like I am still a star player, or I am still great, or I belong on the ice for a minute. 33 when Marcus Felino, who in the very same game had two goals and Marcus Felino right now, without question, like this is a non-debatable topic is a better player than you. Okay. Yeah. When he hustles his ass off, cause he's like, I'm tuckered. Greenway has to get on. I have to get off cause he's a team first guy. So let's, let's not just say, well, this is a, this is for the whole thing. No, he got scratched because he decided to overstep his bounds and he decided to do what wild players previously have done constantly. And it's why the team became unlikable and it's why they lost games. And it's why they were so selfish. You had a group of guys who happily, who happily up until the last couple of years now, certainly through the Fletcher era decks would take shifts that went as long as they wanted to, because they were convinced it was fine. I mean, it's all about me, right? It's all about me. So what Zach did is exactly, and this was the problem. This is how I think the Parisi and Suter and that group ruined the young group that had to be traded, right? Because guys like Coyle and Granlund and Nino saw that. And they're like, well, what the hell? That's me too, right? That's me too. You're impressionable at the age, yeah. Exactly. Yep. So when I am Kirill Kaprizov and I see Zach Parisi like being, what the hell? I'll stay out there. I'm looking at that. I'm going, and there's no discipline for that? Maybe I can do something stupid sometime. Oh, yeah. There's no ramifications because there have been none. There have been none until now. But to see see Zach Parisi, who you know is a veteran, who is highly paid, Mm -hmm. who is, I think, by a lot of people within the game, certainly respected, to see him be a healthy scratch, hallelujah, it's the greatest sign that you can send his teammates, which is he's no better than you. In a lot of cases, Caprice Fiala, he's worse. And he gets no preferential treatment. Everything about this move, wherever it came from, and it was probably, certainly in my opinion, started with Bill Guerin. 
Everything about this is what this franchise has needed for so long, which is somebody who understands how to A, win, B, was a captain type, and C, is willing to put their foot down and say, that's BS. What you did was BS, and we can't allow that to pass without you being punished in some way. This is how tonight's move, and I don't know. The Golden Knights are good. Wild might lose. They might get drilled by five. I don't know. But tonight's move should be look back if this team, and I do think that they are going to, I, I think that they're on the right track. If they are as successful as a lot of people hope they should be, we're going to need to look back on this game and this date as a game changer in the Minnesota Wilds approach to their players, to their team, and realize it's all about me, which was this team's slogan for about four years. It's all about me, right? I mean, God bless him. Eric Stahl, I'll always go back to him. I don't think he did a thing wrong, but he literally signed here and said, I'm going to move to Edina, build my kids a rink, and I'm going to spend the rest of my career here. No, you're not. Not unless you're going to win a Stanley Cup, okay? So these are the type of moves. And and you know what? You We now find out, Dex, two things about Zach. This can go two ways. One, it can go in the direction of, oh, my God, wake-up call. I'm going to become the best damn third-line left wing that I can become, right? Yeah. Like, I'm going to work my ass off, and, and I my skill has eroded and is not as good, but I'm going to work my butt off to be as good as I can and take smart shifts in that role. Okay, that's door one. Door two is... I will not waive a trade, or I will waive a trade, and I'll go to Nashville. I don't care where you send me. I want out. You can't lose with either one. For Bill Guerin, it's a masterful move. Zach Parisi is now forced to answer a question. And it goes one of two ways. And both of them, if you're the wild, ultimately is a win. I absolutely love it. Look at you. Love it. It's a new state of hockey, huh? Certainly sounds like it. Yeah, it's the state of hockey as it's meant to be. Accountability. Yes. State of accountability, basically. Is yes, what people, being said. people are in charge now. Yeah, this is... Uh, the inmates, guess who's not running the asylum anymore? Right. The inmates. And to your point of going back uh, when you were talking about being an impressionable young player at the time in Granlin and Coyle and Nino Zucker, etc. You know, when when you look at someone like Kaprizov, who's obviously a little bit older, so he's 23 years old and, and isn't as young as maybe a rookie, a traditional rookie coming into the league, he's impressionable and he wants to see what he can make his foot in and, and what, he, what he can be comfortable at. When I see someone like Kevin Fiala, who just always seems to play with a chip off his shoulder, like the way Kevin Fiala plays is not, if, if Parisi and Suter have, an, have still had a influence that you can get by with this, Kevin Fiala would not react the way he reacts. Hmm. And Kevin Fiala acts like he's pissed off all the time, whether he scores three goals or not every single night. And I think that demeanor says an awful lot about, about the room, too. When Jared Spurgeon gets named captain over Zach Preezy, Preezy is irked by that decision. He's literally on the record saying, yeah, I'm a little shocked I wasn't consulted. I was, I was a little surprised. I didn't get it. What does that say about him? When Marcus Foligno, a great role player and someone who we've praised in this podca- podcast up and down, when a bottom six, okay, a bottom six forward, which is what Foligno is right now and is going to be for the rest of his career, and he could make a great living doing this for another eight to ten years if he if everything goes according to plan for him. When he is being considered a captain, what does that also say about this room? Prezi and Suter, when they signed in 2013, was a monumental day in Minnesota sports. Everyone remembers where they were. It did change the entire outlook, and it was a much-needed shot in the arm for a franchise that was pretty much stuck in purgatory for the first time. After, after the excitement of what they got here, the expansion draft wore off, the playoff runs and a couple division championships and or playoff appearances wore off, wore off and Todd Richards just literally made this, injected boredom into the team. <laughs> and they needed a signing like this. And Preezy and Suter made that happen. And the, and the belief was two things. One, the supplemental core around them, the Grandlands, Coils, and Ninas of the World would rise up and take the next step. And or two, and we, we kind of, we kind of, without... Hindsight is looking back on this. We were wrong on this, but that this would be a free agent destination that other players were going to want to come to now that Parisian suitors signed. Jess Myers made that point with us a couple months ago when you guys were at the press conference eight, nine years ago that the belief was if Parisian suitor come, we'll get everyone And Look, you took a shot at Thomas Vanek. It didn't work. You made some splashy trades for Jason Pominville, gave up a lot to get him. 
uh, Martin Hansel, et cetera. You, you made some questionable trades is what I'm trying to say, but the, but the destination thing did not work. So you, you go through an eight-year run where you make the playoffs, what, six times in a row. You get to the second round. You get to game six against the eventual Stanley Cup champions in the second round, and it's nice, and it's a, it's a, it's a sour taste to end, but man, this is, the new, this is the new norm in the state of hockey. That was the peak. Game six of a semifinal round is currently the peak of the Parisi and Suter era. And if you're happy with win percentage and regular season success, okay. But just like the Vikings and just like other things, raise your expectations for what you truly want. And I think what you said, and this is going to be a turning point and a, a basically a, a check mark or a bookmark in if this team is for real, we're going to look back on March 3rd, 2021 as the day that they scratched Zach Parisi and things started to turn around for them that if you're a veteran, it doesn't matter who you are. If you're not playing up to the standards, mm-hmm. you're you're going to be held accountable. Like I, I don't I don't want to hear just enjoy the season when Kirill Kaprizov's playing very well, but also could shoot more. No, I want him to shoot more. When Kevin Fiala is playing pissed off, I don't want him to play less pissed off. I want him to play more pissed off. Mm-hmm. When you have a two goalie tandems and Kapo Kakin and Cam Talbot, who have literally turned the entire outlook of this team around because Devin Dubnik and Alex Stalock weren't living up to par, that's another thing to worth celebrating. So. This is a good thing for the Wild. Garen, and this is a Garen and Everson footprint. Give Paul Fenton some credit for trying to change the culture. He was a terrible human being dealing with people, and he deserved to be fired for his job. But he had the right mindset. He just did not communicate it or went about it in the proper fashion. But Bill Garen being, I mean, God, Judd, he's been retired for what, less than 10 years? For, he won a Stanley Cup not long ago with Sidney Crosby. Yep, and he was a captain one time. He knows what it takes to win. He looked at these people and said, you don't have it, and, you just don't. And Dean Evison getting just a two-year deal as an interim coach, we all kind of, well, deep, really? You're not going to do a vetting process? You're not going to look for anyone else? He says, no, I want him to, this to be the guy, and I think that was the right decision. And if they want to address that contract a year from now or when it renews, yep. go for it. But right now, the culture has literally been completely changed. Get used to being uncomfortable. So I think that in in hindsight now, I think that Bruce, who I liked, Budo yeah. was great to cover. Um, I don't know that he, so I think he was brought in here, Dex, to sort of um, try to do the best that he could with the roster that Chuck Fletcher had built. And Chuck didn't want to trade guys, okay? So I think Bruce was brought in as a veteran, experienced guy uh, who was supposed to put his foot down, but make it work. And then Paul got here, and I think Paul was going to fire Bruce, but he didn't get approval to, and it didn't happen. And then Paul got fired. And then Bill came here, and I think what Bill said eventually, I think Bill was going to stick with Bruce through through last season. And then something happened around Valentine's Day of 2020, and he pulled the plug there. Yeah. Uh, and look, Dean, to me, the book is still out on Dean, but I really do think that Dean is doing what Bill has told him, hey, I need this, let's do this. Um, And so in-game, Dean is still important. But I mean, I think this scratch, no question, comes from Bill Guerin, who was a captain, and who probably, if this had happened, so if an old, if old man Parisi had pulled this stunt with Guerin, if Billy Guerin had been on, on a team with Zach Parisi, uh, with the Devils, let's say, uh, and he was a captain and an older player, and mm-hmm. and Parisi was also, at, but Parisi was at the end, and he pulled that stunt. I think when the doors are closed, Bill Guerin goes after Zach. Like I think he goes, he he's a captain type. Like you can't allow that. Um, so I think Bill Guerin put his foot down and said, okay, then you're not going to play. And again, it can go two ways. But I I want to, as we conclude here, I want to run through what today means, because again, I can't, as you said as well. I can't articulate enough how important uh, today is in in where the wild wants to go. Whether they get there or not is a whole different story. But we're talking about the building blocks for where the goal is to go, okay? In 2019, around the trade deadline, Paul Fenton cleared out Coyle, or Nino, Coyle, and Granlund, okay? Yep. And I don't care if you had their jerseys. I don't care if you love them. I don't care if you bought season tickets because of them. They had to go. They absolutely had to go. Because they're bad hockey players? No, because they didn't fit. And if anything, they had been sort of ruined by the culture that they were in. Uh, Fresh starts are fine. Some of them have thrived. Some of them have not. Not my problem. In 2020, February of last year, Zucker, same exact thing. Traded. That trade looks really good right now. Jason is hurt, unfortunately. But again, he was part of the old culture. 
And he was part of the guys who had seen me first for far too long. And when you see me first and you're young, guess what you buy into? Me first too. Again, that's the slogan. Me first. Off-season moves. Koivu told, you're done. Had to happen. Absolutely imperative. I, I, the Koivu, the severing of the tie with Koivu was so important. And Eric Stahl, who, by the way, ideally perfect world would have come back because he can play a position at which the wild needs guys, but he had to go. He had to go. Now, let me, let me introduce three guys who are in the room now, or actually four. And they might not all be great players, but I think they, but I think that there is a very good reason why Bill Guerin went and got at three of, or two of these four. Marcus Foligno, always stand up. No BS. Jared Spurgeon's your captain. I don't know if he talks a ton or not, but he's a damn good player. And I don't think he's a me first guy. No. And then the two guys that Billy has brought in, one is from, from the Nashville deal that said uh, cut into the Predators, Nick Benino. Nick Benino is not a great player, but he's no BS. You can tell. He has captain-like tendencies. I don't know he's a captain because he's not that effective, but he has captain-like tendencies. And the other one, third defensive pair, Ian Cole. Ian Cole, you can tell, is a no BS. We do things a certain way here. I've seen teams win, and Benino's the same way. Like, it's no accident that Cole and Benino decks have been on winning teams, and it's no accident that they have seen guys that can lead, mm -hmm. lead, and they take notes from them. Think about, though, I just went through, I just went through a list of guys who have been jettisoned by this franchise who haven't won jack. Like, all they know is, how do I get the puck? How do I get my goals? How do I get my points? When's my contract, right? And I'm giving you four guys and two guys that they just brought in who might not be great hockey players, but Cole and Benino have seen leadership and they've seen success. And that's important. And so when people say, you know, it doesn't matter the locker room, just shut up about the locker room. It's all about what you can do on the ice. That's true if you own a fantasy hockey team. But if you really want to build a team that can win, you need guys that have seen it, that know it, that will go after their teammates when they don't execute it. And today's move on Parisi is just another step in a very important direction. And now it's up to Zach how he wants to respond. That's it. Well, bravo. Number one, bravo. Uh, I do think getting guys like Benino and Ian Cole even, look, people, people are like, Ian Cole? What's wrong with Greg Pattern? He's just a third-line defenseman. I don't understand this trade, Billy. What are you doing? Exactly. Why, why are we doing this? Well, Ian Cole's been around the block a few times. He knows what it takes to win. Nick Benino, same thing. He's a fourth-line guy, but he, he knows what it takes to win. And, and also, I think it was important to bring in guys that if you want to see, if they want to stick around, and they have something to more show to their game, you're going to get that opportunity. Marcus Johansson had that opportunity, and he's now hurt. And also, I have no idea when the hell he gets back in the lineup now with the way that things are trending. Mm -hmm. To Nick Benino is a defensive first forward who's been around the block and also is a cup is a cup winner and can probably help your team out. And even Bukestead, who came in the league red hot, a prolific college career, got off to a nice start in Florida and then had a bunch of injuries rack up. I don't, what I'm trying to say is I don't know if all these guys and odds are the majority of them, if not all of them probably aren't back next season. Maybe one or two of them are, but the majority of them, the four guys that are UFAs that have been brought in either mid season or this last summer are probably not going to be back here. And that's a good thing. Cause it, you're not bogged down to other players that you don't, you don't want to, to be, to be here for a long time. And what's changed though, the culture in the meantime, they help change the culture. Exactly. Hockey, hockey is like all sports. It's a very fluid sport. Your most important thing for 2021 is to change that culture. And if Benino's not back, guess what he helped do? Change that culture. Exactly. Like I've seen this before. This is how you get there. Like Nick Benino is not the guy who you, who you say in three years, I think he's carrying around Lord Stanley. <laughs> he is the guy who, who is a building block guy to getting there. The wild literally needed to flush their locker room out. And they've done that through various moves. And yes, Parisi is still going to be on this team for now, at least. Yep. But this is another very important step towards flushing the locker room out and flushing the previous culture out. And I didn't think that the team would have the guts to do it. And I apologize for that. But that's because I have become so used to them previously never doing anything like this.
and I absolutely love it. And I think that the impact on guys like Fiala and Kaprizov is going to be great yep. because it tells them there is accountability here. I don't care how much you, you make, what your last name was. Love it. All right. We, agree, man. we are done. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow with a, a full edition of Judd's Hockey Show, wrapping up the uh, two-game series against the Golden Knights. I'm sure there'll be plenty more on the Parisi situation. Heck, there might even be some uh, reckless speculation about Ooh. what might be next if Parisi decides, I want out. We will talk to you later. Declan? Pass shoot score.